Uh, after we suffered through the Terminator T-1000 in the 80s, uh, Anonet Labs have sought to bring havoc to routing and network engineering, and they will introduce the Routinator 3000. Um, I am very, very excited about this talk, because as you may have noticed, this day as a theme is a bit centered around RPKI. And this will be one of the crucial steps in uh, helping operators deploy RPKI on the internet. Martin, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, welcome, or thanks for having me. Um, you may not have heard about the Nelnet Labs, uh, but you definitely used, or yeah, you have used uh, our software. If not yourself, then you've been uh, a client of it. These names probably sound familiar. Um, Admittedly, none of that is about routing security, but as an organization, we've been interested in that for quite some time. Um, it's been quite a bit uh, lately, but earlier this year, we decided to pick up on this again. And um, as you mentioned, uh, the big topic right now in routing security is, is uh, RPKI. Um, so we decided to help with um, making sure that RPKI gets used more. And as we're a software company, we decided to do some software development. Um, <clears throat> there's two parts to this. This here is the first one, which is um, given that there's more talks today about RPKI, I probably don't need to go into detail. But what you have is you have a bunch of CAs uh, that follow the trace of um, the delegation of uh, routing prefixes. And running CAs um, is always fun. Um, the way this is normally done right now is um, you use a hosted system. Here's the one from Bright NCC. So go into their website, you click around a bit, and you get uh, your CAs and your route announcements published. That works quite okay if, like us, you have um, two prefixes and one AS. So you go in there once, click around a bit, and you're done. Uh, if you have lots of prefixes from different sources, uh, you're delegating prefixes, um, we have several ASs, and this is all in flux, then that's maybe not the best way to do this. Um, what you really want is you want to have a system that um, connects to the way you're managing your stuff anyway. Um, so you want to basically run your own CA, and um, that's the first part that, that we're uh, building. Right now, the status is roughly this. Um, so. We have started with it, um, we are thinking about it, we talked to some people, um, we put together our ideas under the URL that's there. Um, so the target is, um, well, ideally pretty much everyone who wants to run one. So um, if this sounds interesting to you, um, uh, have a look at the, the URL there, and if you think that that's not really what you need, then by all means talk to us. Uh, we want to make something that is good for as many people as possible. Um, so this is very early right now, um, but there's the other part, which is the relying party software, which is basically the bit that uh, goes around, collects all the statements that are being made, and um, validates them, validate, validates the signatures, and ends up with a list of prefixes, AS numbers, that are, that are valid. Um, that seemed to us to be the easier part because you know you don't need to create certificates and stuff. Uh, you just need to validate a bunch of signatures. So we decided to start with that. Also, we decided to use this as a test bed for or some experiments uh, whether we can use a relatively new language called Rust uh, to build production-ready software. Um, so we went away. It took about six weeks. Um, and we had something that was working. Six weeks is not a bad time. Um, we spent another week to design a logo. <laughs> um, and yeah, so this is the router Now, what does six week give you? Um, obviously, there's no fancy web interfaces or stuff like that. It's command line only. Um, but it is actually ready to use. Um, one thing that we did is you don't need to configure anything. Um, it comes with the uh, trust anchors for the five uh, RIRs. Um, so what you need to do right now, this is going to change, um, you need to have Rust around, uh, you need to have rsync because that's just how RPKI works right now. Um, and then you can just go and run the thing. Um, cargo run here, that's the command that tells the Rust build system to build. 
and then if it actually succeeds um, to run. Um, once it runs, it goes off uh, and does the rsync thing. You're going to see the terms and conditions for a certain RIR uh, twice for some reason. Um, you'll also see that it complains about not being able to get behind the Great Firewall. That's something that just uh, is like that right now. And then eventually it will start to grind the wheels and it will give you a list of um, AS numbers, prefixes, and the mythical max length thing. Um, this format here uh, is modeled pretty much after what the RIPE NCC validator spits out. The only thing that's missing is the trust anchor that this came from, which we thought wasn't really all that useful. Um, it can also do the other two things that the RIPE NCC validator does, which is JSON and um, the, what is it called, RPSL. There's way too many acronyms starting with R in this thing. Um, uh, that's basically what we have right now. So for some people, this may already be useful in this, in this uh, form. If you basically just take this output and run it through a bunch of scripts and then feed it to your router in some way. Um, what's on the route map to make this uh, a really 1.0 release? So right now we have the preview, which we just decided to call 3000, because why not? Um, it does one shot, command line. So every time you run it, it goes out updates its, its cache of all the things uh, and produces a list for you. Um, that's already pretty good. What we want to do is we want to polish it a little, um, do some proper testing, because right now the testing we've done was we compared it to the output from, uh, from other uh, validators, seem to do the same thing. I guess we should maybe look into that a bit more clearly. Uh, also, we want to do better diagnostics. The way this works right now is it basically just does things that I needed as a developer. Maybe you guys need something else. So we're going to look into that um, and then have a release 1.0 fairly soon. I don't want to promise anything, but yeah. Uh, soon, which also will mean probably we're going to do packages so that you don't have to have Rust uh, installed on your systems. And then, of course, the big thing is going to be A1.0. Um, the roadmap for that mostly revolves around RPKI RTR, so the thing where um, your routers can talk to it directly. You don't have to have some um, scripting to get it into the routers, um, which also means we need to implement local exceptions. That's the whitelists uh, we heard already today from. For some reason, that's called Slurm. I'm still not sure if that's a future Futurama reference or not. And um, a thing we obviously want to do is make it neat, uh, nicer to run, so better deployment, packaging, um, that sort of stuff. Also monitoring, have it, um, have it integrate into the usual monitoring systems like that. Um, and possibly some more. So if you're interested, if you find this an interesting project, but you say, well, I would like to use it, but there's this and this missing, um, by all means talk to us. Um, we want to like the CA, we want to make this usable for uh, pretty much everyone. Um, yeah, so we're here all day. Just talk to us, come talk to us. Um, we made the, a bit of, on the website, as you see here, we also made a mail alias, which is rpki at nlabs.nl. Um, that goes to the relevant people. We're on Twitter, and if you are inclined to then come to uh, GitHub, and leave an issue or even a pull request. That would be awesome as well. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> Gentle reminder to you as network operators, the only way for software quality to improve over time is if there are actual users running the software and giving feedback to developers like Martin and the rest of the NLNet Labs team. So if we want RPKI rich and validation to succeed, and if we want stable software, it means we have to put in effort and run this and chew through the bugs. Eventually, we'll get it right. But it, it, they cannot do this in a, a vacuum. <laughs>